Welcome back. We have just started game four on Zelnaga Caverns, Dignitas' Naniwa, as the festive red in the bottom left. ESC's Goody, despite being down 1-2, uh, has given the good luck, have fun first. Goody will be in the top right as the blue Terran. Let's see if the Panzers can kick into high gear and end up doing a little bit of Hulk smashing. Now in game number two, or not game number two, we are way past game number two, that is old news. Here in game number four, do you think that Goody is going to go for that mech style of play just because that natural is so wide open? So do you think that he is going to to go for that mech style again? Or I have I, I don't think I've ever seen Goody go for Marine Marauder or anything like that. But um, what, what do you think about this map? And yes, Sean, your microphone is working splendidly. I was so worried the little light wasn't showing up, and of course, if the interface is not telling me exactly what's up, I just have no idea what's going on. I'm helpless. But either way, you know, I do think Goody has shown us that mecking can be very, very effective on this map. In particular, getting a lot more Hellions in the composition, because although the tanks are the real powerful meat unit that you want as the core damage dealers of the army, the Hellion count is what lets you be aggressive. They're fast, they have a relatively high amount of hit points for their cost investment, so if you can get a couple of tanks and a ton of Hellions, you can start pushing right away. And I do want to mention, most people know this map by now, but there's always new people to the sport. The natural of this map is one of the most wide open naturals in a lot of the tournament maps right now. There is three open entrances to it, as well as a destructible rock leading up into that, which is exactly why Sean is saying those Hellions can be very effective, because they have so many alternate routes they can get through there, and since they do have that increased HP, it can be difficult for just slow stalkers and zealots. Uh, I mean, stalkers aren't super slow, but when you're chasing around Hellions, they sure seem like it and we do have it looks like pretty standard here from nanny was he does have a cybernetic core on the way has not begun making a zilla quite yet is just now going to be starting that up right now and inside the main base of goody he once again is going for a wall in and has his marine on the low ground the reason that marine's down there is he wants to try and prevent that probe from even getting up the ramp to see anything at all which a lot of players will just sit behind that wall as he does not want to reveal this tech lab that is on this barracks and a tech lab on a barracks? Is that a Marauder getting milled? Oh my god, what's happening, Husky? It's opposite day. Goody building the unit that we have never seen him build in all his years as a professional gamer. He is building a Marauder. That weird unit, it's not, it's not a very good unit. Not a lot of people build them anyways. And of all <laughs> things to do, building it now and going for the fast concussive shell. So it looks like he might be doing a fairly standard push. But look at this, Naniwa manages to see the Marauder shot just dripping all over the Swede's face now. He realizes that he is up against a standard opening. Yeah, Goody finally figuring out what the hotkey for Marauder is. This is a very rare situation. And, and the important thing is, is that Naniwa not only saw the Marauder, but also saw that there was SCVs in pursuit of these two units. So the attack is going to commence right here. You can see Corona boosting out additional Stalkers right now. So when this attack arrives, there will be two Stalkers and one Zealot. The Stalkers do take additional damage. From that broader, the bunker is going up at the natural. Looks like the SCV will get taken out. There is one more SCV though. Don't know if this bunker's gonna finish. This poor Marauder is too fat in all of his football gear. Not going to be able to escape here, but his reinforcing ally has arrived, and it's gonna come down to the focus firing and the micro. One stalker goes down. Will the other stalker goes down? Does not look like it. Oh gosh, Naniwa getting out that second stalker just in time to be able to hold that off. And there's the expansion going down for Naniwa. Great follow-up response. We see Stim started by Goody. And it looks like, oh wow, still rallying these marauders. And it looks like he's gonna try to swing around. Can he pick off this other stalker? Naniwa taking the long path around that back up stalker from Naniwa dealing a lot of damage and Goody accidentally target fires the zealot instead of the back stalker and it looks like wow can he be able to pick off this other stalker and he does manage to get it but there are virtually no units remaining for Goody actually there are no units he just has 21 SCVs and scrambling to build a bunker Naniwa realizes that he's at this advantage gonna try to press it right now does thankfully for Goody have a Marauder up here, so that is going to push back this attack. 
that Marauder will safely be able to hop up inside that bunker once it finishes. But look at this. During that, that harassment kind of back and forth play, Naniwa able to secure his own base. It is nearly completed as well. So that is going to be light years ahead of Goody. So Goody right now transitioning into the very standard, very old school three racks Marine Marauder. Looking at the add-ons of these barracks, we have two tech labs as well as that reactor. You mentioned starting the stem, which is very important to mention that because it shows that he's not going to be playing super defensive. Instead, is going to be aggressive here. So it will come down to can this, this pretty standard three racks attack take Naniwa and punish him for expanding? I, th I think if he doesn't do some damage here, he is going to be light years behind. Yeah, I mean, really, in Goody's position, you're almost all in right now. We're seeing Naniwa do some very good responses, getting the three gateways before the robotics facility. We've seen him rush for the robo in almost every single game at this point. But again, very smartly realizing that his opponent has to make a lot of Marines and Marauders given the deficit he's at. So he's going to begin making those gateway units right away. There's the Chrono Boosted Observer immediately getting the Robo Bay. Again, very strong read right there by Naniwa. Yeah, but will he be able to get that in time? We see some SCVs already getting pulled off the line for Goody. This is uh -oh. going to be a very early attack, and he's going to march down here just taking a look at what Naniwa has planned, keeping in mind that he is chrono boosting out an Observer rather than an Immortal, which he could really use right here. So it is going to be Gateway Units versus Marine Marauder with a lot of SCVs mixed in, and it's important to note that Naniwa does not have the armor upgrade for these units. I mean, it would be pretty early to have it completed, but the gateway units become much more effective once they have that. So the Observer catching this right before it arrives, knocking at his front door. This is a must-win battle for Goody. He has no transition out of this. You can see no command center on the way at all. So he's got to start pushing right now. Will get one free Zealot off the start. Ooh. This is exactly how he wants to go into this battle. That is a huge win right there, getting that free Zealot. And there's some bunkers going down, creating a nice little wall. Those Zealots basically nullify. And it looks like here's the sweep coming up from the stem. And all the probes coming off the line. Naniwa doing a great job cutting that off. Force field plus Zealots, creating a nice big wall. Goody continuing to try to micro to pick off those Zealots. Two do fall. There, all the Zealots are now finally done and gone. But with that Immortal out, it's going to be very hard for the Marauders to press on where they pick off one Stalker, a second Stalker falls. Almost immediately, those units are so fast from Goody doing some great micro picking those off. Almost no units remain for Naniwa. You know, I'm surprised to see Naniwa continue to push all the way in the center of the map because this is exactly what's going to happen. Is more reinforcement. Stim is going to be used. Looks like he's going to try and take out the Immortal. He does get that. Now it's only a couple of gateway units here against these barracks units, which that is going to greatly favor the Terran player, taking out that entire army. Now Naniwa does have his expansion still up and running with some remaining workers there, but is continuing to produce probes here at a, an, an increasing rate, it seems like. But now he is forced to use those Chrono Boosts on the four gateways inside the main base. Another Immortal is on the way. And here is a huge transfer of SCVs down to this attack. Goody is in as all in as you can get right now. Maybe he's hoping that the Marauders will, or uh, that the Immortals will shoot the SCVs rather than the Marauders. So we're going to find out. This is the last battle, really, I think that Goody has a chance at. And it will come down to the Force Fields. There are three sentries. Here it goes right now. Goody definitely needs to win here. Goody trying to get into a good position, but he's just taking way too much time. He's trying to swing around to the left side. Trying to get at the best angle he can. It's a little wider there on the left. And there's the stem forward. And an amazing slice! by Naniwa. The target fire does manage to take out the Immortal, but tons of gateway units getting morphed in, and Goody just stuck behind the wall. And good game, Naniwa with a stable, stable play. The great responses will be advancing on to the next round that now marks four Protosses in the round of eight, three Terrans in the round of eight. The only Zerg remaining, Mondragon against Cruncher, is going to be the next match. But man, what phenomenal, phenomenal play by Naniwa. Yeah, and even after losing that clump of units in the center of the map, uh, Goody may have got a little too excited about it, tried to move out with all of his SCVs, and by the time he was eventually able to get to that natural, kind of biding his time, trying to figure out which way he wanted to go, then Naniwa had way too many units waiting there for him, and even though Naniwa lost that army in the center, he followed it up quickly with four sentries, warping them all in so they would have as much energy as possible, and I still have the replay open just looking at the mineral and Vespine gas count. He still was able to warp in 
in quite a few units once those warp gates came off of cooldown. He was nowhere near being supply blocked at all, so he would have been able, even if he lost this battle, to follow it up with another sizable army, he, as he did have the four gates as well as the robotics. So great play here by Naniwa. Sean, you mentioned him playing a very safe style. Uh, we, we did see him, you know, do kind of that one proxy gate rush. It almost seemed to me like he did that proxy gate as more of a kind of to kind of throw his opponent off a little bit. Um, and, and then unfortunately he did let that gateway finish. However, he he showed us some really good games here. Really, he, he methodically picked apart Goody in these games. He was prepared for that mecking play. And after the the, the only game he lost that very first game, I, it was a clear-cut reason why he lost. And he, he knew exactly what went wrong. It's not like Goody was, you know, getting in his head and picking him apart. He, I, I think he was really prepared here for these matches today. Yeah, you could see a full range of styles prepared by Naniwa. I mean, he opened up with Phoenixes in that first game on Taldarim Altar, and then um, on Crevasse, having just a solid, straight-up early expand, and then the proxy-gating style that we saw uh, in, the, in the next game, and then finishing it all up by completely abandoning his ultra-fast Colossus style and responding with a really cool gateway flood when he saw the position his opponent was in. Very, very nice responding and decision making. And, you know, that's really a lesson for a lot of people out there who are trying to find, you know, like the one true build order. Like they have to like, you know, battle through the woods and go to like this temple and there's this scroll and they open it up and it's just like the Protoss versus Terran build. And really, we're seeing Naniwa not only show different builds from game to game, but show tremendous flexibility within each game. The best example being that Shakura's Plateau game with canceling almost every single structure he ever built and then just deciding, yeah, let's four-gate it up. And it all turned out to be correct. So, very, very cool thinking man's play from Naniwa. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of people out there were hoping to see him perform as well as he did at MLG. This is showing exactly why... Excuse me, why he had that insane record at MLG because to play at the top top, especially, it's very important to note that in, when you're playing, yes, you can have an amazing build order for ladder that you can use over and over and over against different opponents, but when you are playing in a best of five series, the stakes are very high here. Uh, you need to have a lot of build orders prepared and also have very good reactionary play where I, everyone says that's the wrong word to use, but my simple brain is going to stick with that word anyway. <laughs> Basically, where if you mess up your build order on ladder, it's okay. Leave the game. You'll lose some points. You can retry it again uh, against your next opponent. But when you're playing in a tournament, you cannot afford to make those mistakes at all because, yeah, your next game, you're going to be going down into the series, you know, from behind. So... Yeah, it, it, I was very impressed today with Danny Watt. You mentioned a lot of Protoss are advancing, and I think a lot of the Protoss, the thing that's interesting to me is a lot of the Protoss are advancing with completely different play styles, completely different build orders. So we'll, we'll see how that comes into play here in, uh, in, in the next round of the tournament. But with uh, upcoming, as you mentioned, Sean, is going to be a Zerg versus Protoss. So again, it is going to be Cruncher and Mondragon, some fan favorites and some up-and-coming players here uh, in this next series. Whatever you do, do not go anywhere. Us poor little casters need ourselves a five-minute caster break to do our various caster things, such as eating, resting, and soothing our just absolutely fiery throats from all the screaming we've been doing. But don't worry, because when we come back in five short minutes, we'll be bringing you Mondragon versus Cruncher here in the final round of 16 game at the Team Liquid Star League number three, brought to you by PokerStrategy.com. I'm Day9. Oh, I'm, I'm Husky. I'm still here. So, uh, yeah, five-minute break, guys. Definitely come back and enjoy, I guess, the music while we wait. We will be right here in just five minutes. <laughs> 